Hey there friends, I'm Leo and today we're going to be going over some pretty important stuff on Project Clockwork. I'm gonna be sharing with you some valuable tips on how to better keep long-term projects organized, um, the new inventory system that I designed, some improvements on the equipable items and a lot more. If you're new here, this is a devlog series I'm making on my dream game called Project Clockwork. It is heavily inspired by Stardew Valley, Zelda and Fable. And before we get started, I just wanted to say that I will be doing an AMA kind of video as some sort of Christmas special. So if you have any questions that you want me to answer, just comment them down below. I'll be giving everyone that comments a question a shout out. Programming this game, I've learned a lot on how you can better plan ahead for mechanics you are programming and how you can keep everything clean and tidy. To help you avoid the same pitfalls that I fell into, I thought about making this devlog before the one with the pets and stuff like that. So this is kind of a tutorial and devlog at the same time, but don't worry, I have made some of the pets and they are in the game already, more on that later. Um, if you want to skip ahead to a subject that you want to watch, I have some timestamps in the video player, so go check it out. We're gonna start off with the main topic of this video, which is how you can keep your project organized when focusing on a long-term development schedule. When I first started this project, I had a very prototype mentality, just trying to make as many mechanics as I could the fastest way possible. Now, I don't mean that I rushed and uh, made bad code, but it wasn't very well planned either. I figured since I want to make this project work, I gotta prepare for a long-term investment of my time and money by making a very well-organized project. Also, if I didn't organize and prepare right now, I would be, um, it would be a lot harder to do as time went on. Um, this is how my folder scheme was very unorganized and just this huge mess. Um, I tried keeping it organized by separating stuff um, as the file types, so let's say all 3D models would go in the 3D models folder that I called meshes, and all textures would go into the textures folders, so on and so forth. This way of separating files is not very efficient in my opinion, because a lot of times I had a mechanic or a character that had all of his files split into multiple folders. So the blacksmith is an example of that. I had the blacksmith split into three separate file like um, branches and that was very hard for me to find everything related to the blacksmith later. So I took the time to completely reinvent how I'm organizing my game. This time separating content into systems, not file types. Instead of having a folder called textures, I can have a folder called characters with everything related to all characters in the game, or a folder called inventory system with all of my items there. More on that later. In order to be able to map out all of these systems and how they work with each other, I started using this thing called mind maps to get a better vision on what I was doing. Mind maps are a way to spread multiple bubbles that represent topics or ideas that you have and make relationships between these bubbles. This is the mind map I created for the project and you can see here that I have a long road ahead with a bunch of really cool mechanics and awesome things that will make this game more entertaining. My folder scheme is going to mimic this system layout kind of. I also will have some folders on what I'm calling generic systems that are basically the old file organization system that I was using and um, I have that there because some files don't really belong to a particular system being more generic and more easily grouped together. I also took the opportunity to fix a big problem that I had with my old inventory system and here's the thing, when I first started making my inventory I closely followed the tutorial on how to do it without really thinking if it would fit exactly with what I wanted for my game. This led to me making new parts of this inventory system very half-assedly and it became this huge unorganized monster, something like a Frankenstein. I'm gonna give you an example. In my old version, if you wanted to create a new item, you had to make a child of this blueprint here and give all of the object variables using this. Now look at this. 
This contains a lot of redundant and unused variables on most items. Because I didn't take the time to plan all of the different item types and what they would contain. This could even make it hard to manage these objects on the inventory itself. For example, it's harder to detect if the object is a weapon because every item type is practically the same on its contents. Now for the newer item system, I decided to start off doing a mind map of how I wanted all of my items to behave. You can see here that we have the item class, which is the guide that contains only information that every single item in the game will have. Things like name, thumbnail, description. Then this object splits up into children that contain all of their dad's information plus some additional info that is called inheritance and it's one of the coolest things about programming. Over here on the right you have these tools which are basically things the player will carry on his hand, stuff like pickaxes, poles, torches. After that, you have the weapon class that contains all of the stuff from the tool plus the damage type of the weapon. So you have the stuff that is generic for all items and then the stuff that is only for tools and then the stuff that is only for weapons. You also have some other branches here that are for consumables clothing, um, placeable items, etc. And this is how my system is working now. Let's say I want to make a weapon. I first click on the weapon master class and I make a child of it. Now here you can see that every single variable here is required. Not only that, but it's all organized into each type. What if I want to make a clothing piece? Well, it's also organized and contains only things that you would want on a clothing piece. I also changed how this system works on a fundamental level by using object classes instead of structures. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, but you want to learn, I'm thinking about uploading a full tutorial on how to do this system from scratch free on this channel, so let me know if you want it and um, I'm gonna make it. There's also another thing that I started using to keep track of my progress and it has been helping me out a lot. It's an app similar to Trello called Codex. Codex is more intuitive and just has a better feel when I'm using it. Um, I can organize my tasks into areas rather than by a devlog. So Codex is about all of these cards and you have your deck. You have cards that are in your hand, which just means that is stuff that you're focusing on right now. And each card represents a task. And once you complete the task, the, the card is archived and then you can focus on another task. Now, some tasks you can kind of group them together into hero tasks, which would be kind of uh, hero units and they take a lot more uh, time to, to kind of defeat, but you can also make a, a big kind of task into this hero and that would be really good for productivity. Before, all of my tasks were in a category that had the name of the devlog. This would work as a time constraint, right? But now I can have all of my programming tasks on this deck right here called programming. Then any other tasks on their respective places. The best thing about this app though, is that you can also have milestones, which are basically timers for when you want to have things done. I can create, for example, a new milestone here on the calendar and assign any number of tasks to this date, so it is perfect. Now let's talk about what I've made so far on pets. Back when I first started doing these things for this devlog, I originally wanted to completely make the pets, but the system was so messy I had to rework it all, thus bringing up the idea of splitting this into two devlogs, one for organization and another one focused on pets. However, I took some of the concepts that you guys made on the Discord server and I made them into 3D models with basic animations. I also had this idea of making environmental robots that would help um, populate the town, kind of. You would see these guys flying around, carrying stuff, and it would make the world feel more alive, I think. I also started planning the mind map for the pets, where I can keep track of all of the things that I'm going to need and how I'm going to do it. And on the next devlog, I plan on making the full artificial intelligence on these bots. Another thing that took a week or so to make was the fish boys. 
The idea here is that these fish were experimented on by a scientist and became somewhat intelligent. Well, intelligent enough to control a full body mech suit and follow basic instructions. These fish boys are going to be one of the main workforces in the town. They would move crates, build houses, things like that. I'm also planning another small animal to be in a mech suit too, but that's for another time. With this whole organization deal, I didn't really have a lot of time to make a bunch of new assets and new areas, but Rick Salis did two amazing soundtracks and I felt they needed a new area as some sort of a, a backdrop on the videos, so I made this table area with books and potions. I also got this awesome liquid material from the asset store that is very customizable and will be very, very useful for the whole development of the game. This liquid material is different than the one that I used on the fish, and I'm going to be using both on the different occasions on the game, because I think the one that I used on the fish can be transparent, which I think the other one can't. So I can make a lot of different weapons and things like that with these two liquid materials. And speaking of materials, I realized there is a way to make the bricks and other textures look more like 3D, by making this simple change on the material. This just uses a bump texture that dictates which part of your object is in front and which is in the back. Here is a comparison between the old brick wall and the new one using this material. So yeah, I'm also going to be remaking a bunch of materials so they look more 3D on the houses. So this is it for this devlog. Once again, I'd like to thank my patron Django, who's been supporting me for a few months now. Um, I'm planning on making a lot more tutorial videos exclusive to Patreon, just to add more value to people that want to support this project, but more on that on the Christmas video where I'm going to be talking about a lot of my objectives for next year and um, how this year has been, and just to thank you guys for, for supporting and you know so on and so forth. But that is it for this video, thank you so much for watching, if you like the content please subscribe for more and like this video if you liked it. You guys have a wonderful evening, I'm Leo, signing off.